It's uh, half seven. I'm just heading down to the, uh, the harbour. Didn't get much sleep last night. Uh, nervous about going on the boat, I guess. As a freelance producer director, I uh, get invited to do all sorts of interesting and exciting projects. Um, but there's always that uh, one phone call that comes out of the blue that you just don't expect. It's the kind of thing that you'll either love it completely um, and it'll be you know, really absorbing, or it's something that, that, um, that you'll hate. And what is this? There are 17 boats yes. running across the Atlantic to Barbados. Wow! The commission was to produce and direct all the video content for the Tanisco Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. The seas are pretty uh, rough. While on board the support yacht um, crossing the Atlantic, possibly up to 100 days. The first two weeks were spent in the Canary Islands as the rowers arrived. During these two weeks I got a chance to interview each rower and really get to know their, their motivation for taking on this challenge. Victims of trafficking. My film partner in the Canaries is Andy McLeod of Film Canary Islands. In the first two weeks we were creating such huge amounts of material that we ended up with three crews, three edit suites which were almost running 24 hours a day. On the 4th of December I stepped on board the, the support yacht Aurora and met my new family of uh, skipper Richard, first mate Imogen and my fellow deckhands. There was some relief once we got going and we'd left shore and, and the drama and excitement. I think they'll just want to get away as fast as they can, blow that horn. But it turned out there was just as much drama and excitement out at sea. The first two weeks had quite a heavy weather. Uh, quite a scary moment. So the story started to roll in like the Atlantic swells. The rolling a couple of the boats, some of them a few times, causing some injury. Um, As part of the deck crew, I was involved in the watch system, which was six hours off and two hours on. I was lucky if I got four or five hours solid sleep um, and during each, each rotation. This meant that uh, the whole crew ended up, after a couple of weeks, in a slightly dazed state. I've been very lucky not to have uh, ever suffered any serious seasickness, but I was a little bit concerned about doing this job. It was a long time at sea, and um, as well as the sailing, I had to look through a viewfinder and spend a lot of time down below editing on a computer. I was very lucky to get away with not having any seasickness and even managed to get ashore with that wobbly sea leg. This is about as fast as we'll be going for 3,000 miles. The challenge for this project was to cover the whole story, um, including um, on board the rowing boats uh, during the event. It's about to halfway, so a mid-Atlantic. We gave each team a GoPro camera and gave them a little bit of training. Quite a lot of them had already had video cameras and knew how to use them. Um, as we went along, we collected uh, cards from the rowing boats and I edited their footage into my films. After a couple of weeks, the rowing boats had dispersed quite widely across the water and it was taking us two or three days to get from one rowing boat to another. During that time, I was able to create my own content, even just filming a pair of tuna that decided to swim alongside the yacht for a few days, dolphins, bow riding. I also made a film about how to find rowing boats. This one got a lot of good feedback, particularly from the parents and families of the rowers. So they know when we're near. Are we doing well? We also had to rescue some of the rowers. Because they'd already met me, I'd already interviewed them. They had trust in me and, and were comfortable with me, and I was able to get some really interesting insight into the experience. 10 years on my mortgage or something. Marla, the agency producer, um, went out to Barbados a couple of weeks before the race ended. Um, I was still out at sea um, supporting and filming the road to recovery team who had no water and their rudder had broken. Marla had set up two video crews in Barbados and they were able to film using the template we'd set up in the Canaries. I just have to say yes. It's this event has so many incredible statistics, but I think at the end of the day, it's the personal stories that people are most interested in. My mum sort of looked at me and laughed and thought I was just joking. Many of the competitors hadn't been on the sea before, never mind a small boat, and they were just about to take on the biggest challenges of their life. What would I absolutely hate? Oh my God, what have I just signed up for? It was a privilege to get to know them in the Canary Islands, to see them battle away across the Atlantic, and then to see them spat out of the maelstrom at the other end. That's Barbados. That's it then, it's crossed. <laughs> and having the first steak and first beer, then to be able to interview them again, and within an hour or two of getting off the boat and 
experience through them the incredible journey that they've just taken. Then you get the fire service, you get lo- there's like a hundred people on the side waving flags. The two of us just had tears. There wasn't any room for passengers on board to support yacht, um, but the story had to be told by a filmmaker as well as by the rowing boats. The aim was to get the stories online within a day or two of them happening. I was able to be a part of the crew on the support yacht, but also direct, shoot and edit completed films and send them back to the UK, telling the stories as they were happening. So are you guys going to do this again? <laughs> it was great. That's amazing. A lifelong experience. Done. Woo!